in the Checker Dome in St. Louis, Missouri. It's the Cleveland Force against your St. Louis Steamers. Tonight's game is sponsored in part by Budweiser. Hey, when you say Bud, you've said it all. By Schnucks, the friendliest store in town. By McDonald's, we do it all for you. And by Venture and the Colonel Day stores. The Checker Dome is filling up. Terry Lywicki along with Joel Myers. And what a game you're going to see tonight, fans. Sit back and enjoy yourself because the Cleveland Force have won four straight. And, Joel, they are out to get the Steamers tonight. Especially after the Steamers beat the Force the last time the two teams played this year in St. Louis. The Steamers beat the Force by a score of 8-7. to seven. As you said, the Force have won their last four in a row. The Force with the third best record of the Major Indoor Soccer League. The Force with a record of 9-5. and five. And the Steamers of St. Louis with the second best record in the MISL. The Steamers with an exceptional 11-2 and two more mark. So we should see some great action tonight. The teams are about to be introduced. The St. Louis Steamers and the Cleveland Force. You're looking at the two most improved teams in the Major Indoor Soccer League. The Steamers this year enjoying an 11-2 and two record on top of the Central Division. But you look at Cleveland, 9-5. and five, And hey, folks. Of that nine and five, four straight wins right in a row coming into tonight's game with the addition of a couple of players in the form of Ian Anderson, former Houston Summit soccer player, and Mike Berry, outstanding defenseman. Cleveland's going to give St. Louis a run for its money. So sit back, enjoy yourself. Tonight, it's the St. Louis Steamers on KMOX TV. <laughs> Two teams ready for kickoff. Cleveland moving right to left as you look at your screen. They're dressed in the yellow with a white trim. John Davies, referee of tonight's game, a West Coast referee. Flew all the way in for the game. Probably hated to leave that weather out on the West Coast. Steamers moving left to right. Blue tops, white bottoms. Steamers hosting four straight wins by Cleveland. Steamers quickly breaking out. It's Ebert. And Yomaz Orhan, Orhan finding a spot up front. You see number 11 Orhan there. He found a spot on the front line. He's playing with the Iron Man, John Stremlau. Iron Man has played more consecutive games in the MISL than any other player in its short three-year history. Two years for the Steamers. He played in Houston last year. Tony Bellinger, Bellinger down low, nine Ebert, misses it. And now you see Cleveland settle. That's Mike Berry, great acquisition for Cleveland, and this man, Cliff Brown, the goalkeeper, has been playing remarkably well. Possibility of a breakaway for Cleveland, but Slobo comes out, clears the ball away. No three-line violation. Two teams, Joe Myers, uh, certainly have a lot at stake tonight, both being in the Central Division. And this year, with more teams, playoff spots becoming more and more important. You were talking about Yomaz Orhan earlier in the broadcast just a couple of seconds ago. Orhan was the key man in Chicago last night, scoring a couple of goals for the Steamers, scoring the tying goal with about seven minutes and ten seconds left to go in that game. And then the Steamers won in the shootout, the second shootout in the history of the Major Indoor Soccer League. Shows you the kind of parity in the league this year. Orhan misfires with a right foot. And it was a perfect pass by Ty Keo. Keo wearing number ten into the lineup. It's Sammy Bick and Carl Rose back on defense. Ebert Orhan, Bick, Rose, and Keo on the field for the Steamers. Cleveland would love to come away with a victory tonight because the Steamers go to Cleveland three more times this year. This is the last time the St. Louis fans will see the force. The Steamers going to Cleveland for three more contests. Each year that the team plays in this league, they learn how to use the boards a little bit better, and that is definitely what Cleveland has learned how to do this year. That's John O'Hara. Fires O'Hara played for Pittsburgh last year as Ian Anderson, number four. Watch Ian Anderson, number four, the man with the ball right there. He came over to Cleveland this season. Just signed recently, a great acquisition. Cleveland much, much stronger on the field. Ian Anderson, as you said, has been with Cleveland only about three or four weeks, and Anderson already with 18 points for the force. He can play. Tony Glavin, 22 of the Steamers, he can play. Glavin, who has really come on strong. 
Pick with a right foot sends it around. Brown, little trouble handling. Amelia Romero standing right there. No score. Welcome, everybody. Happy holidays. Terry Lywicki along with Joel Myers here on Camel X TV. You're watching the St. Louis Steamers. Steamers on top of the Central Division. This is one of their foes in the division there. And Cleveland is right behind them. Rose on a run in the midfield. Very slow starting team, St. Louis, this year. They've had to come from behind a number of times. Number of times. I don't remember when they were leading last time. And last year, you might remember, the Steamers lost a lot of games in the last minute or two. And this year, it's all turned around, and the Steamers are the ones who are taking advantage of those last-second victories. A couple in the last couple of weeks. Cleared by number six, Bellinger, who might be playing the best indoor soccer of his career at this point. He is playing great. This whole Steamers team has really come together. Two losses. Can you imagine that? Tonight, they stand a chance to match the total number of victories they had all of last season. Last season, 12 and 20, 11 and 2 on the year so far. Cleveland. John Victor with the ball right now for Cleveland upfield. Victor's been all over the field for the Cleveland Force. Here comes Bellinger. He has Zebert. Two teams kind of feeling each other out in the midfield. Both teams changing quickly. Coaches trying to save a little win. Cleveland flew in here today, and as you heard Joel say, St. Louis played in Chicago in a shootout. 11 men went to the line. We'll explain that a little later. It's really somewhat mystifying that you can play 15 minutes of sudden death and nobody scoring, and then have 11 guys go to the line. But the Steamers came away victorious. Stremlau inside, looking for Ebert. Cleveland covering up nicely, now breaking out, taking long runs on either wing. Could have had a call there, Michelle Losevich, <laughs> taking a shot from Steve Petcher. That's Losevich against the boards. George Duznip sent the ball over to Losevich. Let's watch it again. You'll see right here. Petcher marking Losevich, and Petcher with the foot. Didn't look like Steve Petcher caught Losevich with the foot. I don't know how Losevich can hold his nose when Petcher hit him in the back, but <laughs> inside Losevich off the board. Battling. Down low with Stremlau. Referee, Mr. Davies, whistles. And Whistle. obstruction. Steamers put the ball back into play. Free kick. No score. 10 45 remaining first quarter. Steamers having one more home game before they close the 1980 season out. December 29th, San Francisco Fog comes here to the Checker Dome. Petcher in the midfield, taken away. Cleveland controlling nicely. If you watch Cleveland, every time they get the ball, man, in control with the ball, go to the center of the field. Two wingers take opposite side, but the Steamers are there. That's Petcher. Petcher has been known to make a few runs out of his own zone. He does that time. Covering up is John Stremlau. That's the addition of Stremlau this year, what he does so well. Usually teams would play St. Louis last year and let the defenders, uh, Petcher, Bellinger, make long runs out of their own end. Then nobody would be there to cover up. This year, players playing both ends of the field. Here's Graham Fife, number 15, the fourth leading scorer in the Major Indoor Soccer League last year as a member of the Pittsburgh Spirit. The Fife. A great acquisition by Cleveland. Outlet pass. Look at this. It's a defender pick. And we'll see that all night from the St. Louis Steamers. We saw Petcher about 30 seconds ago. Sam Vick. You'll see a lot of these St. Louis defenders crossing the center stripe and even the red third. Joel just pointed out the St. Louis defender is not afraid to come up. St. Louis, very equally distributed scoring this year. Although Glavin's come on recently to take the scoring lead, at no point has anybody really gone out and run away with a scoring title. Defenders are in it all the way. This is Orhan inside the Ebert. Big settles. They try and give it to Orhan, let him tee up that right leg. Orhan could be a big figure for the St. Louis Seamers in the second half of the season. Great move by Carl Rose. He has Orhan on the left. Rose out to Orhan. Shot. He missed by Wide open. Oh, 
Oh, the Steamers had it working there as again a defender, Carl Rose, went down low with the ball. He drew the defender, and Orhan standing wide open. Watch it again. Great move by Rose. You're absolutely right. Great move. Carl Rose with the left foot over to Orhan. Orhan misses. Cliff Brown couldn't come up with the rebound, and neither could Carl Rose. The ball back in play, and the Cleveland Force are on the attack. Orhan having a little trouble as twice he's had the ball down at his feet and misfired. There he is again. He misfires. Orhan, number 11. There he is. Oh, that's Orhan. The defender back to cover up, Victor. And Orhan was the leading scorer for the Hartford Hellions last year. Gilmez, his third year of indoor soccer. Long pass inside. Petcher settles. Back to Slobo Ilyevsky. Ilyevsky, look at a great outlet pass, and he's got Orhan. Streaking on right wing, Emilio Romero. Romero still in control. He's got Bellinger at the point. Bellinger fires! Brown pulls it out of the air. That was a rocket off the foot of Tony Bellinger and a good save by Cliff Brown. I'll tell you what set that play up was a great outlet pass by Ilyevsky. Put it right inside the third line and watch this shot. Here's what happens on quick outlet passes. Bellinger, boom, great save by Brown. Cliff Brown, double out, the goalie for Cleveland. Offside pass. And on that last play we saw, Orhan had the ball, sent it over to Emilio Romero, back to Tony Bellinger. Bellinger took the big shot. We're looking at the Steamers scoring so far this year. Tony Glavin, the leading scorer for the St. Louis Steamers, 23 points. 19 for Don Ebert, Emilio Romero with 16. This has to be the most balanced scoring attack in the MISL right now. And at 23 points, Glavin's come on strong recently. Petcher puts the offside kick into play from the point of infraction that they cite at the red line. So if the ball crosses over in the air, shot Romero once again with a great pass, this time over to Tony Glavin. Watch it again, down low. Now off the boards, Glavin always hustling. Look give at the return go. pass. Perfect give and go from Romero to Glavin. Dynamite play by the Steamers. No score, 6.50 remaining, first quarter. Ilyevsky comes out of goal. You're watching the Cleveland Force and your St. Louis Steamers here on KMOX TV. Six minutes and 45 seconds left to be played in the first period. Good game so far. Tony Glavin, man up front, Sean Grimaldi! Oh, and a great save by Grimaldi. He stepped in behind Brown and took it right off the boom. Steamers pressure. And David Grimaldi, Johnny on the spot once again. Two Watch saves by again. Grimaldi. Oh, does Glavin battle out front? Romero settled and teed it. Romero must wonder by now what he has to do to score a goal. There's Great a play by Grimaldi. Lesson to be learned, soccer players. You saw Romero settle the ball and hit it. One touch, even shot off the post. Step rebound high and wide. Sam Vick looking for the rebound on the half volley off the shot from Don Ebert. Just going over the glass, and Cliff Brown will put it back into play for the Cleveland Force. Six minutes and five seconds left in the first quarter. Steamers really pressuring. Brown, the goaltender for Cleveland, has had to come up big a couple of times here in the first quarter. Anyone can put the goal kick back into play once the ball leaves the playing surface. Last touch by the Steamers on offense. It was put back into play by a goal kick. Ilyevsky, long outlet pass, Ebert. Ebert free to take the pass, not a particularly good play by the defender from Cleveland. Dawkins, again, lets Ebert get down low. Ebert, inside, Orhan, just fires. There's Keogh. Cleveland just hanging back, nice move by the referee. Shot by Sam Vick and Don Ebert just failing to capitalize on the rebound. Dawkins controls. Steamers are really teeing off on Cleveland right now. We don't have a, any statistics in front of us on shots on goal, but it must be about 10 to 1 for the St. Louis Steamers. Well, if you're using your hands to count, you ran out in the first couple of minutes. This is Ilyevsky. Carl Rose, crowd comes alive. Great crowd on hand here in the Checker Dome. Rose. Getting some space, return pass, Rose. And again, covering up back on defense, David Grimaldi by Cliff Brown. Steamers changing on the fly. 
six men aside, five attackers for Steamer's purposes, and your goalkeeper. Unlimited substitution. Four 15-minute quarters. We're in the first of those four 15-minute quarters. 4.35 remaining. It'll look at Ty Keo. Keo has been nagged by injuries all season long. How's he feeling, Joe? Have you talked to him? No, I haven't talked to Ty Keo. Setting the five for the St. Louis Seamers right now. Bellinger's on the floor, along with Ty Keo, Steve Petcher, Emilio Romero, and Yomaz Orhan. The Seamers have it on the free kick. Watching uh, down on the field, you'll notice steamers are changing quickly on the rotation. Reaction from the crowd when the public address announcer, Kevin Slayton, says, scores around the MISL. Only one other game being played tonight. That's New York at Buffalo. And wouldn't you know it, Buffalo in their home arena, beating New York 5-4 at the end of three. Ilyevsky comes out of goal, took the return pass, never giving the ball a chance to rebound. What Elievsky did there is something you learn after you come and play indoors for a while, and that is rather than let the ball rebound, come out and let somebody take a shot, he cuts it off off the boards and cuts the angle down. Orhan on left wing has Emilio Romero, number 14, and John Stremlaw, number 5. Oh, great header by Romero. Or that was Orhan, number 11. Emilio Romero still down low. Now Petcher. This line looks great so far. The Orhan... Romero and Stremla line looks superb. That's something the steamers have done this year. Match up lines. Long run. Uninhibited by any defenders. Cleveland brings it way down for Ilyevsky. Steamers got caught on the change that time. And that was Mike Berry all alone in front of the goal. Had Slobo not picked up that loose ball. Berry was camped right in front of Slobo looking for the rebound. It's Glavin, Stremla, and Romero up front for the steamers. Tony Glavin, left footed shot. Battling. You watch this again. You'll see Cliff Brown complain about a handball inside the box. Boom. That was just hard work on the part of Emilio Romero. Watch Glavin take the first shot. Glavin with the left foot off the glass, and Glavin just outworks the defender for Cleveland. See Cliff Brown right there indicating handball. Emilio Romero wants to hear nothing of it. 11th goal this season for Romero. So with three minutes remaining in this, the first quarter, Steamers go on top of the force, one to nothing. It's a big goal for St. Louis. That was a handball on John Victor earlier that went undetected, so it's an even-up call. You're wearing your stripes tonight. You Although, good. Cliff Brown... I like you in black and white. You know? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff nothing. Brown doesn't like it too much, though. I'll tell you, no, no job in the MISL like a goaltender's job. Offside pass as Brown put it over the two lines. <laughs> Ball will come back to the red line as you look at Cliff Brown. Had a fantastic season so far. We haven't heard much from Ruben Ostergaragas yet this evening. Ostergaraga is the leading scorer for the Cleveland Force so far this year. Ostergaraga with 26 points, leading the Cleveland Force. And right behind Ruben is Mike Berry with 22 points. Sam Beck gives it to Ebert. Ebert has Glavin, Stremlau, and Petcher with Sammy Beck. Here comes the force out of their own zone, John O'Hara. O'Hara, another good young American player. O'Hara battling Glavin. Quickly, ball put back into play. Now, Bick. You see, Ilyevsky's only been tested once in this first quarter with time running down under two minutes now. Cleveland has had no offensive punch in the first 13 and a half minutes of the first period. Return pass, Ian Anderson, number four. Ian's a team leader. He was the captain of the Houston Summit soccer team, the indoor team. He was the captain of the Houston Hurricane, the outdoor team. He has played indoors. He's a brilliant player. He was an MISL All-Star. He wears number four for Cleveland. He is now playing in the midfield. 
Anderson makes a run. Offside pass will bring him back to the bench. And that was Graham Fife looking for Ian Anderson on the left side. A three-line pass. The Seamers have the lead. The Seamers of St. Louis won the Cleveland Force nothing. A minute, 28 seconds left to be played in the first period. The offside pass puts the ball back down to the red line. Captain Steamer. Oh, they love him. Shot off the boards. Brown takes the rebound. Look who's down low. Mr. Glavin, 22. Good play by Steve Petcher. Steamers in control. They lead 1-0. Minute remaining. First quarter. Emilio Romero's 11th goal of the season has the Steamers on top 1-0. Ty Keough. Saw Keough that time facing the boards. Look for the rebound. Cleveland looks good. They don't look bad at all. They have just fallen back into a defensive posture and let the Steamers tee off on them all night long. Something you can't do with the legs the Steamers have. Here's a possible uh, three on two break. But Petcher's back to uh, thwart the Cleveland drive. But Cleveland will have a free kick. 31 seconds left in the first. St. Louis crowd in the holiday spirit. Sitting quietly as their steamers lead. Barry. Strong right-footed kick. Cleared but not out. Look at Cleveland use the boards. Very well. Battling down low. Tony Bellinger. Inside there's Barry shot up over the top of the plexiglass. Mike Barry found himself standing at the doorstep all alone. And that was a perfect pass by George Dusnip. Dusnip saw Barry all alone, as you say, Terry, in front of the uh, goal mouth. And Slobo came out, cut down the angle, and the only chance for Mike Barry was to just get it over Slobo Ilyevsky. Slobo with a good play, and the ball going out of bounds. You probably hear us mention Mike Barry a lot tonight. He's the only guy on the team with a one-syllable name. Battling along the near boards. You can see that Cleveland didn't agree with the referee's call. Time running down, under five seconds now, remaining in the first quarter. Well played first quarter by both teams. That's the end of the first period. Harm goes off. The St. Louis Steamers on top of the Cleveland Force, one to nothing. You're watching the St. Louis Steamers here on KMOX TV. Price except. The St. Louis Steamers 11 and 2 on the season playing their Central Division foe, the Cleveland Force 9 and 5. Cleveland winning four straight coming into tonight's game, but there you see it. Steamers on top, 1 to nothing. Terry Lawicki along with Joel Myers. Joel, you might describe Emilio Romero's goal here. Tony Glavin has the ball crossing the center line. Glavin will take the initial shot. It goes over on the left wing. That is John Stremlau on the left wing. Romero is going into the corner. We can't see Emilio right now, but Glavin will take the shot with the left foot. It'll go wide to the left. Now watch Romero just absolutely outwork the defender. Ro Emilio Romero with his 11th goal of the season and the only goal of the first period. The St. Louis Steamers on top of the Cleveland Force by a score of one to nothing. More and more, the Steamers are learning how to use the boards replay-wise as far as the ball coming off the boards getting good position down low. As you look at the field, the Steamers on the brightly new painted logo, Steamers logo, here in the checker dome. Steamers moving right to left in the blue homes. Home team wears the dark uniform here in the MISL. Three, four team divisions in the major indoor soccer league. Steamers and the force in the central division. The central division has probably turned out to be the toughest division of all three, even though the New York Arrows play in the Atlantic Division. I'm sure my brother Timmy is dying when I say that because Baltimore also plays in the Atlantic Division. But the play of the teams this year has improved 100%. And these two teams you're watching on the field are probably the most improved teams in the league this year. Brown goes to the ground, comes up. Outlet pass, right wing. Shots on goal in the first period. St. Louis out shooting Cleveland third. 
You know, one thing I've noticed here in St. Louis, Joel, is that uh, you go to other arenas and you'll hear phenomenal shots on goal. And a lot of times, uh, not necessarily considered shots as you look at the Atlantic Division. New York running two. away with that Atlantic Division oh, no! lead. Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Hartford. Philadelphia playing well now at 8-6. They've come back and played strongly recently. Barry inside again. Ilyevsky caught out a goal, releases the ball. As I was saying about the shots, here in St. Louis, it has to be a shot on goal, not a shot that hits the plexiglass up into the stands. They only credit them shots on goals. So a lot of times in the agate, you'll read the shots in St. Louis lower than they are in other arenas. Not because they maybe took less shots. Follow that, Joel? Again. Seamers with a two-on-one possibility. This is Donnie Ebert. Ebert playing great. Has Orhan. Orhan seeing a lot of playing time tonight. That was Mike Berry. Good follow-up play by Mike Berry. Coming back and helping out playing both ends of the floor. One of the reasons Orhan seeing a lot of work tonight, Joel. Some injuries to the Steamers so far. Injuries to defender Greg Mikowski. Mikowski is on the injured reserve list. Mikowski with knee surgery. Lost in that game. The Steamers won by a score of 6-5. to five. Steamers caught short-handed three on two inside look at Elieski come out now it's going to go the other way wide open downfield Emilio Romero he's got one tonight he fell down the phantom blade of grass caught Emilio going backwards I guess they didn't mow the lawn down there Joel they need to cut the grass a little lower he's got to tie those laces I think one of those laces was untied also out for the steamers tonight forward Greg Villa and forward Denny Vanninger Vanninger, the, the goal you saw Romero score, probably nobody does it better than Vanninger does, positioning himself down low. Much more physical, strong, steamer team this year. Great to watch. One to nothing here in the Checker Dome. St. Louis Steamers on top of the Cleveland Force. Terry Lywicki along with Joel Myers. Ian Anderson breaking out for Cleveland. Long pass. You see Anderson. He stepped over the red line before he made the pass. Central Division. Tough division this year. Steamers on top. 11-2. and two. And Cleveland making a run at the St. Louis Steamers with uh, four victories in a row. Chicago coming back down to earth after starting busting out of the gate. Chicago now at 6-8 and eight in Buffalo. In the basement with a five and nine record. Funny thing about Buffalo in the basement with five and nine is they, man for man, might be one of the best, if not one of the best team in the MISL this year. So it isn't necessarily the caliber of the players on your roster. The coaching aspect of this game has become more and more important. As the coaches learn the indoor game, you see much more sophisticated methods of runs from the off wings outlet distribution passes as the game takes its form Barry inside interesting shot by Barry never settled it as a roll by he just teed off and Barry had Duesnip on the left wing but Petcher made the big play Romero and Glavin it's two on four look at that work by Tony Glavin Keo left foot shot off the plexiglass and wide Petcher nearly runs over Romero to get the ball Listen nope. to the fans. They want that two-minute penalty. You love it? For a delay of game. Quickly in a play. Romero, right foot, tees it up and tie and wide. Emilio Romero is all over the field tonight. And that whistle was a handball on Emilio Romero. Cleveland now breaking out of their own zone. Ebert over to cover up. Rebound shot. You see Ilyevsky. Boy, does he play the boards well. Now, look at the outlet pass. And immediately, he turns defense into offense. Quick transition. Orhan's a big guy, number 11. For indoor soccer standards, anyway. Now, the Iron Man, Johnny Stremlau. Stremlau, what a pass inside to Ebert. Oh, would he have loved to have that one? He was trying to turn, I think, and hit it with his left foot. Had the goalie leaning. You like that pass back again? I think Don Ebert was talking to himself after receiving that pass and not taking advantage of the opportunity. A perfect play by John Stremlau. Oh, 
Ten minutes remaining, second quarter. You're watching the St. Louis Steamers on top of the Central Division. What a change from last year when they were 12 and 20 on the season this year. Playing 20 home and 20 away games, they've only lost twice. Nice play, Tony Bellinger. What a play by Tony Bellinger. One of the best defenders in the major indoor he is soccer so league. good. And here's his partner, Petcher. Shot, what a shot by Petcher. Two-handed save by Brown. Pushes it up over the plexiglass. It'll be a corner kick for St. Louis. Watch Petcher and Bellinger. They work together so well. Now watch Bellinger. Perfect tackle. Boom. Got to the ball before the player took the ball away with the left foot and turns around right away and is ready to go back upfield. Nice play by Bellinger. Bellinger goes to the bench for a rest. Rose inside looking for Winston Hackett. It is now Ty Keo, Sam Bick, Carl Rose, Tony Glavin, and Winston Hackett on the field for St. Louis. 1-0. Steamers on top of the fourth. Second quarter. You're watching the major indoor soccer league here on Camel X TV. It has been a relatively clean game. It has been for the most part. A very positional, deliberate style of play by both teams. Both teams don't want to make any mistakes. A very tight checking game. Each club marking up and down the floor. I hope everyone had a good holiday. Even though they're not over yet. Good Christmas. What'd you get for Christmas, Joe? I didn't get anything. Didn't I get a I thing saw for some Christmas. Coal in your pocket tonight. <laughs> I wasn't sure. That's Glavin. He hits it on Donkeo's left foot. Here's Bick. No, as a matter of fact, I got a Leroy Neiman for Christmas. Did you? Yeah, nice one. He's I don't think there's a bad one, though. He's a horse trainer, isn't he? Uh, I think that's Jolly. <laughs> you look at where, did you come, where did you come from before tonight's game? Where were you before this game? I don't know. Eight minutes, 41 seconds left in the first half. The Seamers on top, one to nothing. This is Tony Glavin down low. Look at Glavin. He fakes the goaltender. How many guys would have taken the shot? Keo out front. Keo still battling. Brown goes to the ground. I might make a note about the referee, number 16, you see coming into your picture now. He's from the West Coast. Uh, the MISL just recently, this season, expanded to the West Coast with the San Francisco team. So the referee in chief, Joe Matnick, has had to go through a whole instructional period with a whole new set of referees. This man, number 16, is one of those gentlemen. About a third of the way through the MISL schedule this season, starting a little earlier in November. First game this year was played November 7th versus the first year, I think, the first game was played like the third week of December. There's Tony Glavin, three-line pass offside. You've seen the Atlantic Division, you've seen the Central Division. Now look at the Western Division. There's San Francisco, they're the Fog. Wichita, they were in last year, good team, they're eight and six. San Francisco, the Fog, Denver, an all-American young team in Phoenix who have been selling out their arena in Phoenix. Looks like another St. Louis phenomenon. A losing team and a winning crowd. Exactly eight minutes left to be played in the first half. The Seamers on top of the Cleveland Force, one to nothing. Relatively low scoring game so far. You get the feeling both these teams are going to break out here in a little while. Ilyevsky anticipating the shot goes to the ground, but the Steamers take the ball away. Winston Hackett goes to the ground. John O'Hara and Winston Hackett tied up in front of the Steamers bench, and it's a free kick for Ty Keo. John O'Hara, first year as a Cleveland player, last year played in Pittsburgh. Mike Berry. Berry takes the center spot. It's like a fast break in basketball. One man takes the middle, you get two wingers. And Barry has had the best scoring chances for the Cleveland Force tonight. Breakaway possibility. Nice tackle by Barry. Keeps the ball in play. Cleveland off the board. Zelievsky. Slobo having another brilliant game so far. 7.25 remaining. Second quarter. We're at the Checker Dome in St. Louis, where last season the Steamers averaged over 14,500 in this building. Brought a lot of people, it brought attention to the major indoor soccer league, no doubt about it. 
Matter of fact, the steamers and the whole MISL were written up in the New York Times this past week as New York's going to see more and more of indoor soccer. Carl Rose staying at home and helping out Slobo. Slobo going over to the right side to clear the ball. And Carl Rose staying home in front of the net. Winston Hackett. Nice defense. David Grimaldi takes the ball away, settles. Ian Anderson goes high with a leg. Look at Hackett. He gives it down to Orhan. Orhan! Orhan, what footed shot. You could tell right there that Yomez Orhan was a left-footed soccer player. And a powerful left-footed soccer player. Has he got a bush up there on his on his, on his shoulders? Or he what? almost threw John Victor to the floor on that play. He's got some hair. Look at Orhan. Now watch. He's going to go to that. You see him try to settle. Twice he took a shot at it with a left foot. Cleveland working their way back in. Trailing 1-0 shot Anderson got the rebound you see how far that rebound came it hit the plexiglass went 25 feet outside there it is again I don't know if you fans saw the game from Hartford that we did a couple of weeks ago but the plexiglass in that arena is higher behind the dasher boards all the way around the ball never left the playing surface we played that game in less than two hours that night in that Hartford great and the Seamers came up with a victory in Hartford that night, 3-2, to two, on a goal by Steve Petcher with a little over two and a half minutes left to be played. Steamers this season have time and time and time again come from behind to win games. Speaking of Petcher, he looks like a forward. Now you see Cleveland fall into a four-man box defense. Brown can't control Orhan again with a left foot. Keo, Orhan, shot, oh, he hit that one with his right foot. Bellinger, Ebert. Finally, Cleveland clear. And that last shot by Orhan looked like it caught a little bit of the wood on the crossbar. Now watch. We've been talking about Orhan's left foot. Watch this. Goes either way. Boom. Woo. That was a crossbar shot. Cliff Brown's duck. <laughs> I, I'd get out of the way, too, if I was Cliff Brown. This looked like bullets coming at the goalkeeper. Referee is going to call an offside pass here. Again, we have seen a number of offside passes. Hands on the hip, John Davies indicates three-line violation. There are two red lines either side of the center line. If the ball travels in the air over those two red lines, it is an offside pass, one of the few infractions. Steamers on top, one to nothing. Five minutes remaining, second quarter. Petcher, long shot, looking for Glavin down low. Cliff Brown sends it upfield, Ty Keogh steps in. Look at the steamers, one touch all the way. Playing brilliant soccer. Oh, what a play, outside, happened. What a magnificent play by Petcher to head it. He put it right on Hackett's foot. Great teamwork. Unselfish play by the Steamers. Tony Glavin. Left foot sends it up over the plexiglass. What a play by Petcher. All aspects of soccer in the indoor game. Mr. Brown getting his work tonight. Cliff Brown with a 5.04 goals against average last year in the Major Indoor Soccer League. And Cliff Brown, a member of the University of Washington soccer team during his college career. Imagine playing outdoor soccer in Washington. I wonder if it rained at all. <laughs> Sam Bick. Indicating to Mike Berry, sorry. Just don't get in my way again. Steamers on top, one to nothing. Playing their Central Division foe here in the Major Indoor Soccer League. Oh, what a save by Ilyowski. Oh, Slobo comes up big for the Steamers. Here comes the Steamers breaking out of their own zone. Donnie Ebert, crowd comes to life. Ebert, left foot, shot is blocked up over the top of the plexiglass. Watch this save. Whew. 
Ruben Osagaraga all in alone in front after Sammy Vick fanned on the clearing shot. Oh. And look at Slobo. Just getting in front of that shot by Osagaraga. Nice play, Slobo. Boy, Slobo has come on so well. Look at Graham Fife. Fife down on the field. Graham Fife, who you just saw on your screen, upset with that call. And the Seamers with the free kick. There's Cliff Brown. Three minutes, 50 seconds remaining, second quarter. Cliff Brown sends it up midfield. What a save by Slobo Ilyevsky. Unbelievable. Mike Berry. Berry sends it across. Inside. What a shot. That is by Ilyevsky. Oh. I thought Graham Fife had a goal on that last headshot, but it just hit the right goal post. Cleveland now teeing off on St. Louis. Rose back to help. Great play, LaCar Rose. Look at Carl. Now three on two. Three on two. Here come the Steamers. 3-12 remaining, Tony Golovin, Golovin, back to Rose, Rose, inside, down Ebert, Ebert, rebound shot, Golovin, nobody can tee off, maybe one too many passes. Here comes Mike Berry, Berry, left-footed shot, blocked nicely by Johnny Stromow. This is John O'Hara, O'Hara sends it right wing. Inside, look at the steamers cover up man on man. Patcher, Ebert to Glavin. Glavin, number 22, that's Tony Glavin. Glavin moving across. Glavin inside for Ebert, number nine. Ebert to Keo. Keo fakes one shot, leaves it back. Keo with a left foot out front, Brown can't handle. I mean, Tony Glavin is all over the field tonight. Looking for the rebound of the right wing right there. Off the shot by Ty Keo And Keo slipped by Cliff Brown with that shot. It wasn't a hard shot, but it really faked Cliff Brown out. Oh, here's some. Winston Hawkins. Oh, great save by Brown. Brown came out, never touched the ball outside of his and box. That, that was a heads-up play by Brown, that he didn't have a handball called on that play. Emilio John... And Winston Hackett had the breakaway. Immediately, Cleveland came on the surge. Bellinger gives it away. Rebound shot, Petcher clears. Down low, minute 25 remaining, second quarter. Steamers on top. Emilio John gives it for Hackett. Winston Hackett, shot, rebound. John overruns. The rebound shot, but he was looking for it. Look at Ilyevsky, way out of goal. Ilyevsky, this guy had to be a frustrated forward in his career. He likes to leave the goal crease. Ty Keo helping out Slobo on that last play. Graham Fife misfires. We've seen more of missed kicks tonight as the steamers break out. It's Sam Bick in the middle. He's got Hackett and John on his left. Forty seconds left to be played in the first half. The Seamers on top of the force by a score of one to nothing. Score does not indicate how the game has gone. Both teams have had good scoring opportunities. Both goaltenders have come up big. Sammy Bick blocking the shot by Osteraga. Look at Tony Glavin. He's got Ebert on the left. Ebert off the boards. Fakes the shot. Time running down. Under 10 seconds remaining. Finally, Brown clears. Here comes Barry, one last rush for Cleveland. They'll be satisfied to go in one nothing. It has been a well-played first half. As you look at Slobo Ilyevsky, who has come up big a number of times for the Steamers. 
And I tell you, Eliaski made one segment here at the end, one series of saves just before the start of this halftime. And you get to watch it again. Watch this play out front. Oh. That is the left foot of Graham Fife going off the goalpost and the head by Tony Bellinger. That's the kind of action we've seen this entire first half. You're watching the St. Louis Steamers here on KMOX TV. Choice is Schnucks. Standing here amidst the empty seats of the Checker Dome, which was an all too familiar sight three years ago, when there was even talk of closing this marvelous facility. But that was before Ralston Purina bought the arena, renamed it the Checker Dome, and hired Charlie Mancuso, who in three short years has turned the Checker Dome into one of the most successful arenas in North America. Charlie, nice to see you again. And one of those reasons, Charlie, has to be uh, due to the ball you're uh, holding and the league in which that is played and the Steamers' phenomenal success last season. There's no question about that, Terry. And uh, last year when we uh, opened the doors for the first game of the season, we thought we'd have a nice crowd because it was opening night, a new sport and a new event. However, uh, the turnout that night and, and for the following 16 nights after that was phenomenal in one word. And uh, it literally set not only the city but the country on fire as far as indoor soccer is concerned. I remember something, fans, that uh, you always project what kind of attendance you're going to get in an event and you staff accordingly. What kind of projections did you think the steamers at the onset of last season were going to do uh, attendance-wise? It's funny you should ask because when we uh, uh, announced at the press conference the steamers would be playing 16 home games here last year, uh, we thought the steamers would average maybe 3,500 people per game. And uh, opening night, uh, we knew that we would have a bigger crowd. And uh, from that night on, it was just... Uh, as I said, phenomenal. We averaged 14,000 people a game last year, and, and it was just a tremendous uh, surprise to all of us, and it was a very nice surprise. Charlie, though, it isn't just the steamers. This building has really taken a turnaround, uh, maybe the eighth largest grossing building in the United States. Uh, it's come out of almost oblivious state, and you've done a magnificent job. What, what are some of the keys as far as other events? Naturally, the Blues drawing well. Uh, last year at this time, Terry, the uh, Checkerdome was... Uh, named the number six facility in the United States of America by Billboard magazine, which basically it's, it's uh, based on the grosses of the concerts and the musical events that we have. However, in uh, three years, we've turned the building around uh, considerably, and it's a tribute to the community of St. Louis. In 1977, uh, we came in and took over at the Checker Dome, and there was 104 events and about 600,000 uh, people through the building a year. And this past year, we had 195 event days, and uh, in excess of 2.1 million people in attendance at those events. So it's, it's a tribute to a great staff we have on hand here, and it's a tribute to the community of St. Louis who loves to be entertained. What are the different seating capacities in the arena for events? Well, for indoor soccer, it's 18,000 plus, and that plus is standing room, and that's the same with uh, hockey. For concerts such as Kenny Rogers, which was held here uh, twice in the past two years, the seating capacity was 20,060 and uh, he came very near filling the place both times. Uh, for concerts, we have uh, uh, in the round 20,060, as I said, for Kenny Rogers. For other events, uh, we have, uh, when we have the stage on the end for concerts, there'll be as many as uh, 18,005, or if we have a smaller setup, there'll be a setup with about 15,700. Very versatile. What's upcoming here in the Checker Dome in the coming weeks? We have a lot of very, very exciting events coming up. Uh, this has been this holiday weekend in between Christmas and New Year has been very busy for us and it's uh, it's it's been filled with variety uh, last night we were host at Charlie Daniels band which was a capacity house uh, tonight of course we're gonna have a near capacity house if not a capacity house tomorrow night we'll have Ario Speedwagon one of the uh, Midwest most popular rock and roll groups which will be a capacity house uh, Monday night the steamers are back in action with uh, a very good advance sale right now Tuesday the Blues again the third best team in the NHL uh, what a tremendous success story that is. They'll be back in action Tuesday, and that'll be a big house. And then Wednesday, we end the 1980 year, the end of the first year of this decade, with a superstar concert with Teddy Pendergrass, Stephanie Mills, and the Chai Lights, which is going to be a, just a tremendous way to go end the year. My man, Teddy. Hey, congratulations, Charlie, and thanks for visiting with us at halftime. Thank you very much.
We'll be back with the start of the second half kickoff here on Camo X TV. You're watching the St. Louis Steamers. Evening's adventure. Two teams getting ready for this second half. Steamers on top of the force, one to nothing. Terry Lywicki along with Joel Myers. Want to see how the Steamers went on top? Great crowd on hand tonight. It was Emilio Romero's 11th goal of the season. Romero down low doing what he should do. And we don't see Emilio Romero just yet. He's in the corner. Now Tony Glavin will take the pass from John Stremlau in the middle. And with the left foot, the shot will go wide to the left. But watch Romero outwork, out hustle the defender for the Cleveland Force. Romero with his 11th goal of the year and the assist, the only assist going to Tony Glavin. Time of that goal, 11 minutes and 43 seconds of the first period. St. Louis outshot Cleveland 27-22 in the first half. I have to thank Charlie Mancusa, our halftime guest. He's going to receive from Way Mueller Jewelers a quartz watch by Seiko. They feature a wide selection of dress and sporty watches, Seiko. Today, all watches will be made this way. They're featured at Way Mueller, authorized Seiko dealer. Steamers moving left to right. Got to be a two minute penalty coming up right here. First penalty of the game. There's the gentleman who committed the violation, number six, Trevor Dawkins of Cleveland. What happens here, sports fans, is very simply, there is a rule in the major indoor soccer league. You're on defense, pressure coming your way, you put it up over your end of the plexiglass, hey, you're going to the box for two minutes, and there he goes. Steamers will be on the power play for this reason. Now watch, pressuring Steamers, boom, he hits the ball, and you know what that is? That's lack of skill. Well, it didn't appear to be a deliberate shove out of bounds. Going towards the plexiglass, but it doesn't make any difference. Two-minute delay of game penalty going against Trevor Dawkins of the Cleveland Force. All right, now let's watch the steamers set up on the power play. Orhan goes down low. Yulmez Orhan, there he is right there. He's got Tony Glavin, Johnny Stremlau, Ty Keo, and Emilio John out on the power play. This is one part of major indoor soccer that has escalated. It's the coaching techniques on items just like this. Power plays and shorthanded goals. So watch Cleveland defense and watch the Steamers attack. Steamers, blue top, white bottoms in the whole blue. That's Amelia John. He's down low. The defense comes in and covers up on a box, leaving Glavin. Glavin. Glavin taking the shot, Norhan looking for the rebound. Glavin intercepts the pass, he has Orhan, Orhan taken to the ground. A handball in the middle on Jettis, no call though. Rebound shot, Emilio Romero, nice little touch, excuse me, Emilio John, as Yomez Orhan says, hey. Holding onto his head, is that Excedrin Headache 101 he's got there? I think they pulled his hair. <laughs> Pull his hair, pulled him to the ground, no doubt. One of the it. disadvantages to wearing that long hairdo. Knowing Yomez for three years, this is the shortest I've seen his hair. Cliff Brown, for another 51 seconds, will be barraged by the steamers. Steamers on top, one to nothing. Shot on, on the power goal. play. Excuse me, Terry. Shots on goal in the first half for the Steamers of St. Louis, 27. And for the Cleveland Force, 22. Force trying to cover up and defend. Up into the stands, you're going to look from field level. Steamers put the ball back into play. It's Glavin. Keo. Keo out on right wing. He's a left-footed kicker. Stremla, I'll go either way. Tony Glavin's playing quarterback. This is Ty Keo inside. Look at that turn right-footed shot by Orhan. We had talked about his left leg in the first half. One last rush for the Seamers. 13 seconds left on the power play. Delay a game penalty. About to elapse for Cleveland. Time runs down. Both teams back at full strength. Ilyevsky way out of goal. I guarantee you, Slobo. I remember a team, I'm trying to think which team it was, the first year who had a goaltender that also played forward. I don't think that was the intention of Pat McBride, but that's what he had. Good help on that play from Ty Keo and Tony Glavin as Slobo went out. 
tried to cut down the angle. That goes either way for you new fans that haven't seen an indoor soccer game. This is Yomez Orhan on the right foot up over the plexiglass. As I was saying, with a goalkeeper, it goes either way. A lot of goalkeepers will become hesitant, take a step back, let the play come to them, and as a result, they get bombarded. Ilyevsky, very early in his career as an indoor goalkeeper, as did that man, Cliff Brown, figured out, hey, I'm going to go out and take control of this situation. The indecision usually costs the goalkeeper. Exactly so you right. can't be indecisive about what you're going to do, and Slobo is far from indecisive. Slobo will come out to the center stripe if, if he was allowed to. I think Pat McBride would have a nervous breakdown in the process. Here's a, here's a funny shot. On a goal kick, as I explained in the first half, anyone can take the kick. And usually you get some experienced guy who really knows how to hit the ball. What happened to Cleveland? They hit the ball up over the sideboards. Dan McDonald on the floor for the first time tonight for the Seamers. And again, Ilyevsky. What a right foot by Ilyevsky. It'll be offside, so he hit it all the way. Now this field is 200 by 85. They put the artificial surface right down. Slobo Ilyevsky has played some kind of soccer for the Steamers this season. Not a slam against anybody who was in goal for the Steamers last year, but Slobo has the instincts to play indoors. He is very quick, he is very aggressive. O'Hara with a good play on Emilio Romero. One nothing, uncharacteristic a little bit of indoor soccer, very low scoring. As you saw, Ilyevsky couldn't cut the angle there. And Mike Berry to O'Hara. Bellinger. Cleveland, you saw, handled the ball. Probably a misquote handle. One touch. Rose. Carl plays with more confidence every day. Rose makes a break. Steamer's changing on the fly. Vic comes out of the box. McDonald goes to the box. Emilio Romero in control. He's got Ebert on right. Oh, Donnie Ebert. Ebert leaves it for Rose. Left-footed shot up over the plexiglass and out of play. I think Carl was just a little bit tired as he took that run. And again, a good soccer lesson. Knee over the balls. Can't lean back. A disappointed Carl Rose going over to the Steamers bench. A good drive, though, by Romero, Rose, and Don Ebert for the Steamers. Ten minutes and 35 seconds left to be played in the third period. See Pick give it back to Ilyevsky. On a period right there of two or three seconds, you saw both goalkeepers gain control. Now, once again, Brown. Now, look at these outlet passes. Boom. Shep Messing of New York taught everybody how, how to hit that outlet pass between Messing and his goalkeeper, or his uh, striker, Jungle. They used to team up on that long outlet pass. Now, did you see the way Cleveland brought the ball back into their own zone and gave it back to Cliff Brown? He could not play the ball with his hands. Would have been a penalty. Fight. Cleveland now loosening up just a little bit, taking a lot more chances, and this is what happens when you take chances. You come up short-handed. Now Ian Anderson, number four, Cleveland, moving right to left. They trail one to nothing. 9.30 remaining, third quarter. We're in the Checker Dome in St. Louis, Missouri. Terry Lywicki along with Joel Myers. Hackett, great save by Cliff Brown. Winston Hackett was on a solo. Here comes the force. Anderson allows the ball to come off. Now he has to hustle back. Stremlau, who has some kind of touch. Look at this save again. Winston Hackett going in on the right wing. And watch Brown come out, cut down the angle, make the save with his legs. And the ball comes out. Cleveland back on the attack. Look at Ilyevsky. Way out of goal again. 
He's got Ebert on right wing. Oh, and a nice play. Yentis, Wayne Yentis for Cleveland. Covering up nicely. Amelia Romero. Being guarded man on man by John O'Hare. You hear Cliff Brown tell him, send it to Walter. Don't give it to me, Bellinger. Oh, Ebert got the rebound. What a chance for St. Louis. Bellinger and Ebert. Bellinger shot going wide to the left, and Ebert not handling the rebound very well and not getting off a very good shot. Ebert really teed off with that one. Donnie Ebert. But Cleveland controls. Loses his footing along the board. Nice give and go. Barry looking for the return pass, but Ilyevsky doing just what we talked about, coming out and taking control of the situation. And Sam Vick deflecting the ball back to Slobo, almost put it in his own net. An obstruction call on Emilio Romero. Romero, who has the steamer's only goal. Seven minutes remaining, third quarter. Steamers in Cleveland playing a well-checked, very tight. Both teams very equally matched. A good play by Steve Petcher. Stopping the initial shot by Lasovic. Steamers. Oh, hit the corner of the crossbar. Trevor Dawkins teed off on a free kick with the corner of the crossbar. Cleveland picking up some momentum. The force down low. Barry was inside, but again, Petcher takes control. Watch it again off the free kick. And it just hits the inside of the left post. That's home court advantage. Here's to Ty Keo. Keo on the field with Petcher. Winston Hackett and Sam Pick. Two gets called on a tripping. Three kick St. Louis. Keo puts the ball into play. Petcher out on the right point. The big guy gives it away. A lot of play in the midfield area. Neither team has taken a dominant control of the game. Bosper Cohn no, no, on the way. field for Cleveland for the first time this evening. St. Louis has had the ball in the Cleveland zone for a long time. Dave, Dave, come out, Dave, come out, Dave. Dave, come out on the weak side, weak side. Good Winston defense. Hackett. You hear Cliff Brown, the goaltender, giving directions. Prosper Cohen. Finally, Keogh sends it up over the boards. No call. When I say no call, the Steamers enjoyed a power play out of that opportunity earlier. And Cleveland was called for delay again. And the Steamers did get a break. Ty Keogh sending the ball out of play. No infraction called. Anderson down low, being marked by Keo. Ilyevsky right on the edge of his box. Steamers playing a very disciplined game this evening. Catcher, what a play by Petcher. Petcher, instead of making a run, tried to put it up to Tony Glavin. Grimaldi down on the ground. David Grimaldi, number 18. Grimaldi with the position on Tony Glavin. Both jostling for a position, going after the ball. Tying each other up. 
and the force have a free kick. Four minutes and 56 seconds left to be played in the third period. The steamers on top, one to nothing. Here come the force across the midfield stripe. Anderson moves around Bellinger. Bellinger and Anderson. Two all-stars in the MISL. Anderson goes to the ground, tripping the call on Tony Bellinger. It'll be a free kick for Cleveland. Watch it again. Tony Bellinger marking Ian Anderson in the corner, going into the boards together. And watch Bellinger take the legs out from under Ian Anderson. Anderson going down, looking for the two-minute penalty. No penalty call, and the force have some good scoring chances. Out front, Cleveland pressuring. John Victor, number eight, sends it up over the plexiglass into this throng of a crowd. Another great crowd on hand for the Steamers. Remember, the Steamers, December 29th here in the Checker Dome against the San Francisco Fog, a new addition to the MISL, an expansion team in that Western Division. Steamers in the Fog on Monday, the 29th. That's 7.30. That's this Monday night. And the Checker Dome box office is open daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can also pick up Steamers tickets by going over to the Sears location closest to you and by calling dial 6, 569-0500. You can charge your tickets to Visa or Master Charge by calling dial 6 at 569-0500. Four minutes remaining, third quarter. Steamers on top, one to nothing. A well-played game, low scoring. Both these teams are evenly matched. Graham Fife. Fife now has to come back and cover up. Emilio John. Inside. Stromlau scores! Tremlau making it look very easy, waiting for Collins to make the move. Emilio John on a perfect pass. Emilio John going off to the right wing to Tremlau from a different angle. Watch John on the left wing. Now watch Tony Glavin. Glavin does not touch the ball. It goes over to Tremlau, just out of the reach of that defender. And Tremlau lifts it over Collins. That's Cliff Brown. Cliff Brown checked that, the goalie. And immediately, Stremlau's first goal tonight. And this game is going to open up now. Watch this. Three minutes, 20 seconds remaining, third quarter. Both teams are going to go out and get after each other a little more. The game has got to open up. Both these teams have tremendous scoring capabilities. Schlotthauer on the floor for the first time with the trip, and the Steamers have the ball on the free kick. This is Winston Hackett. Petcher miscues. Steamers a little careless at this point in the third quarter. Shot by Petcher Ebert looking for the rebound out front. And Don Ebert just missed with that head. Shot. Good. Brown was on the ground, had him beat. Cliff Brown just getting a hand on the shot by Sam Bick going wide to the right. On an average, the Force have given up just under five goals a game. But they have scored 82 goals in 14 games. Good Three save. of their players have double figures St. Louis with just under two minutes remaining, and this is the third quarter on top, two to nothing. Stremlau and Emilio Romero. Emilio John. John, score left foot. What a save by Brown. Cliff Brown just got a hand on it, pushed it wide. Boom. Cliff Brown has shown you the importance of a goalkeeper. Ian Anderson 
for Cleveland. St. Louis is very dangerous in this kind of situation as they fall back into a defensive posture. They counterattack so well. Anderson. Oh, Ian, that was a tricky little shot. Kind of a banana shot. John with a brilliant pass off the boards took his own rebound gave it over past Glavin to Stremlau for the last goal still in the game gets called tripping oh Ian Anderson is taken hard to the ground two minute penalty to Tony Bellinger Anderson was about to walk around Made a great move on Bellinger. And it's going to be a two-minute penalty for tripping on Tony Bellinger. Anderson still on the floor, as you can see. There's an injury timeout on the field to number four, Ian Anderson. We'll be back with more St. Louis Steamers action here on KMOX TV. <laughs> playing shorthanded the penalty to Tony Bellinger. Unless Cleveland scores, Bellinger will have to serve the remainder of his penalty about a minute in the fourth quarter. So there's 50 seconds remaining in this the third quarter. Cleveland on the power play. Interesting configuration Cleveland plays from the power play as opposed to the steamer. Oh! Carl Rose with a good defensive play. Rose, Ebert, Bick, and Petra on the floor for St. Louis. Bad play by one of the Steamers fans. He miscued completely as the ball went up over the plexiglass. Look at Ebert. Ebert anticipating all the way, but Mike Berry comes back. Time running down in this third quarter. 20 seconds. Minute and 17 remaining in a pellet. The uh, penalty to Tony Bellinger. Some fancy footwork by Sam Bick. Referee indicates pushing violation on Cleveland right in front of the steamer's bench. I'm sure he got some help with that call. Only four seconds left in the third period. Ebert out front. Oh, Donnie Ebert as time elapses in this third quarter. Stuck one by it. So the Steamers will play shorthanded for 57 seconds of the fourth quarter as they lead at the end of three quarters, two to nothing. Along with Joel Myers, where the Steamers are on top of their Central Division foe, the Cleveland Force. Two to nothing, and mind you, Cleveland had come in here with four straight victories. This should be a very interesting fourth period, considering the Steamers played in Chicago last night. We'll look and see if the Steamers get a bit tired in the fourth period. Here's the last St. Louis goal. John rolling down the left wing, Glavin in front, and on the right side, you can't see him, John Stremlau with the right foot. Wow. Right over Cliff Brown. Brown made the move. Stremlau very nonchalantly just chipped the ball over the fallen goalkeeper. The assist going to Emilio John. St. Louis on top of Cleveland by a score of two to nothing. Steamers here on Monday night, the 29th against the San Francisco Fog of the Western Division. St. Louis playing shorthanded for the remainder of the penalty to Tony Ballinger, another 57 seconds. If there is a time to take a penalty, it's at the end of a quarter, so at least you get a little break defensively to go in and rest a little bit. Steamers kick off two teams, switch ends. Rose descends it deep, tries to kill off a little time. Here comes the force. They're trailing two to nothing. They're on the power play. Force moving left to right. Inside, Anderson tried to hit the ball on the fly. 
and that long leg of Steve Petcher out there to knock the ball away. John O'Hara is quarterbacking. Eber playing the point is all over the place. And only 20 seconds left on the Cleveland power play. When Bellinger comes out of the box, he's going to be at the Cleveland end of the field. Fetcher sends it way downfield. Offside call. It'll come back to the red line. Ten seconds remaining in the penalty to Fetcher. Or excuse me, to Bellinger. Fetcher. Five shot. Great throw. In the empty. Number four, Ian Anderson of Cleveland. A dangerous bicycle kick right in the goal crease, and it's going to be a free kick for Steve Petcher and the Steamers. What a shot by Graham Fife of Cleveland. What a save by Slobo Ilyevsky. That was a well-timed pass by Slobo. Bellinger had just come out of the penalty box. Both of them were some very surprised when that ball ended. <laughs> I think so. I think it shocked Tony Bellinger. Steamers on top, two to nothing. O'Hara doing a good job of marking Don Ebert of the Steamers. We're in the Checker Dome. Home of the 1981 MISL championship game to be played on March 29th. Whether the Steamers are in it or not. Keo off the boards out front looking for Orhan who was making a run from the right wing. Very well played game between both teams. Both teams playing very conservatively. And I think we're going to see Cleveland come out of that shell. You'll see some defenders from Cleveland in the next three or four minutes if the score stays the same. You'll see the Cleveland defenders cross the midfield stripe, even go into the attacking zone. They're going to have to take some chances. St. Louis on top of Cleveland by a score of two to nothing. Remember, both these teams have played just last night. Cleveland came in today. The Steamers returned from Chicago. They played tough, tough games. Legs got to get weary over a 40-game season. But look at little Tony Glavin. Glavin fires. Now you see the Steamers attacking with two, three maximum. They're not going to get caught in this kind of situation is what they're trying to avoid. Cleveland breaking out, four on three. Steamers hustling back. Shot, what a save by Ilyevsky. Oh, Slobo just got the right hand on it. John, John Victor with that shot for the Cleveland Force. Slobo just getting the right hand on the shot, going over the crossbar and coming out to Graham Fife, but there was an infraction. And the steamers send it on down. That was earmarked for the left corner of the net. Ilyevsky put the right hand on it. Oh! Yomaz Orhan with that strong left foot had the open shot just wide. He goes to the bench. Hebert back out on the field. McDonald down low defensing for St. Louis. Cleared by Ebert. A forward is back covering up. Now Ebert makes a long run. Ty Keogh gives it down. It's Keogh, Glavin, Ebert, McDonald, and Sam Bick for St. Louis. What a shot by Cody Glavin! Oh, Cody Glavin! Tony Glavin taking things into his own hands, moves the ball over to the left foot. A great shot with the left foot, beating Cliff Brown on the short side. Keo will send the ball down the boards to Tony Glavin. Glavin slows the ball up, moves in with the right foot, goes over to the left side, and sends the shot past Cliff Brown. They're gonna learn that move of Glavin's. He scored a number of goals doing that very same thing. He deeks right, puts the ball out on his left foot, and boom. 
And the assist on that goal going to Ty Keogh. Carl Rose, Rose, tees it off, rebound, wide. Cleveland down three to nothing in this, the fourth quarter. 11 minutes remaining. Both these teams have great scoring ability. Anderson, nice inside. Ilyevsky right out front. And a good clear on the head by Sam Beck. Rose finally settles. But you saw the kind of team Cleveland is. They get scored on, and boom, they come back. In the next minute and a half, they attack St. Louis. Helped by a St. Louis fan trying to put the hand nice out shot, there. Now, that's a handball on you, sir. You can't touch the ball. He was helping out the steamers of St. Louis, putting the ball back into play, should've hoping the referee header. didn't catch it. You should have hit a header from there. You You're know? right. He was in good position for the header. <laughs> Goal change for Cleveland. A little surprising. Very surprising. Kano, the very number one for Cleveland. Well, that's a little strange. Cliff Brown was arguing with some of his defenders in the last couple of minutes. Cliff Brown was playing great. He was playing exceptional. Well, that's why we're announcers and they're coaching. Maybe we should change. We second guess pretty well. So Cleveland makes a goaltending change. For what reason? We're not quite sure. Maybe uh, Kano can come out of goal and score. That would be new, I guess. A goalkeeper in the striking position. Sam Bick with plenty of room. Tees it off. Why? Stremlau hits the ball, keeps it in play. Look at Bick. Nobody pressuring the ball. Now Amelia Romero lays it off. Bick goes for it. Finally, Cleveland clears. You watch St. Louis play a very interesting style of play right here. When you're leading three to nothing, what do you do? You fall back, you play defense, you cover up man on man. Five shots, great save, Ilyevsky. Oh, what a save by Slobo Ilyevsky. Slobo picked the pocket of Graham Fife on that shot, the right foot going off to the left of Slobo. Slobo rising oh. to the occasion. Great reaction on the part of Slobo Ilyevsky. What a save by Slobo. Fight. Inside. Still battling. Ilyevsky clears. Here comes the Steamers. Nine minutes remaining. Fourth quarter. Steamers on top. Steamers with a win tonight would match their total output of wins for the entire year last year. We're only a third of the way through the season. 11 and 2 on the year. Cleveland 9 and 5. Both Central Division teams. Barry. Nice move by Barry. Pulled it from his left foot to his right. Shot was partially blocked. There's the new keeper for Cleveland, Kano. Leaving it for Barry. Mr. Petra steps in. And again, both teams are playing very well. Nice passes, good give and goes. Well played indoor game. Ilyevsky. Still loose out front. Barry. Shot. Gorman, Gorman tried to get it back to Orhan. The game opens up. Orhan, rebound shot. Here comes the force. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left in regulation time. The steamer's up by a score of three to nothing. Don Ebert coming onto the floor. He's been on the field a long time for Cleveland. But now John O'Hara. Immediately O'Hara comes on the field and gives it away. Oh, Dean Anderson knew he had a chance right there. And that was a big break There's for Slobo. sophisticated fans throwing the ball back in. 
hate to put the whammy on Slobo, but tell me, Terry, in the history of the steamers of St. Louis, has there been a shutout recorded? Not that I'm aware of, and I, I got let's a cast on my shutout by a St. Louis goaltender. Except that that's one to look up in the book, so. Under seven minutes left to be played. Oh, brilliant footwork. Great play by Tony Bellinger. And if Bellinger had not been there, two of the force players down low. Look at this Cleveland team on the attack. Shot. Oh, they score. I needed to talk about shutouts, didn't I? John Victor, after Joe Myers, puts the whammy on him. Thanks a lot, pal. John Victor <laughs> slides one by Slobo Ilyevsky, but I tell you, give all the credit to the Cleveland Force. John Victor moving down the right wing, takes the shot, and it deflects. It goes off a steamer in front. I couldn't tell who that was. It looked like Steve Petcher. Maybe we'll see it over from a different angle. Watch in front the ball. Hits Steve Petcher. Deflection off Petcher. Pass to startled Slobo Ilyevsky. You're dead right. So it was the deflected shot. So John Victor gets the force on the board. Three to one. Six minutes, 25 seconds. Still plenty of time for the force. I've said that with three seconds and two goal margins and seen a change. Seen amazing game so far in the MISL this year. The other game going on tonight in the MISL, New York at Buffalo, a classic confrontation. The New York Arrows were trailing, going late into the game, and the most valuable player in the MISL last year, a gentleman by the name of Steve Jungle, got his third goal of the seat of that game, his 43rd of the season, and New York defeated Buffalo 6-5 in overtime. And how many times have you heard announcers this year say, overtime, shootout? Hey, that just doesn't happen, ladies and gentlemen. This is a third-year league that has developed a parity that is unbelievable. And here you have a club like Buffalo that has a 5-9 and nine record going against New York, the Arrows, with a 14-2 and two slate. So for the Steamers, that's good news because Buffalo is the Central Division foe. Buffalo now goes to 5-10. and 10. New York, 12. They've only lost two games so far this year. Matter of fact, New York went the whole season last year in New York at Nassau Coliseum and never lost a game. They've never lost a game in the playoffs. There's they always a first that it may be here at the Checker Dome this year. 5-20 remaining fourth quarter. Steamers on top of the Cleveland Bulls 3-1. Here comes Kyle Rose, right wing. Off the rebound. Oh, Yomaz Orhan standing right out front. Sends it up over the plexiglass. What a pass off the board. Heads up play by Carl Rose. Carl Rose streaking down the right wing. Sending the ball towards the goal crease. Watch Orhan. Sending it right over the goal. And behind Orhan, Romero was there. Had Orhan not made connections. But it was a good play by Carl Rose. Carl Rose, a former New York arrow. Orhan upset with the play. Getting back up, though. And the force half possession. Cleveland. Still pressuring. You see the play in the midfield now. That's where the steamers would like to keep it. Under five minutes remaining. What a crowd on hand again here in the Checker Dome. If you haven't seen the steamers this year, you're watching them. There's nothing like seeing a steamers game here in the Checker Dome. Next home game was on the 29th. That's this Monday against the San Francisco Fog. You can't really duplicate what's happened here in St. Louis in two years. You come to these games, it's really unbelievable. Fans understand it. Steamers versus the Fog this Monday, the 29th at 7.30. And if you don't think you should go out and buy tickets tonight here in the Checker Dome, over 15,000 on hand once again. And let me remind everyone, tickets are on sale at the Checker Dome box office daily between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Also at all Sears locations, and by calling dial ticks at 569-0500. 569-0500 to charge it to Master Charge or Visa. Cleveland now pressuring in the midfield. Ty Keo. Keo battling. Look at the heart. Steamers can play some soccer this year. Paul Hustle. Ty Keo just out hustling Esther Garaga. How many times last year, if you were a Steamers fan, you would see this situation, and the Steamers 
would give up a goal or two and all of a sudden the game would become very interesting. Time running down, three minutes, 40 seconds. Look at Cleveland. This is Barry off the board, Zelievsky. Five steamers back on defense. Glavin, Ebert, Keo, Petcher, and Bellinger. Keo settles. Watch the skill of the New York players. Oh, grab point. Do you believe? Bravo, Ilyevsky got a hand on it. What a play. And Ty Keo once again. Ty Keo knocked the ball out of the crease and stopped the last shot. I'm going to tell you, Ilyevsky, no doubt about it, played one of the most brilliant games tonight. When he had oh. to make it, Joe, oh, right there. And, and robbing Graham Fife oh, again. Who? Oh, watch what he did to Fife the way before. Look at this. Fife. Boom. Turns. Look at he got a hand on it. Do you believe it? And oh, then he's the, down the other way. And then Keo behind Slobo, clearing the ball out. Steamers on top, three to one. Time running down. This would be a great win for St. Louis tonight. They'd open up some margin for themselves. In the oh, what a play! A brilliant play! Emilio Romero sent it across the boards. That shot tells it all right there. And Winston Hackett hurling himself in midair, leaving his feet and pumping it in for the Steamers. Well, it was made by a neat play by Romero. Romero beating his man on the right wing along the board, sending it along, going past the goalie, Kano, and Hackett off the ground completely, leaving the ground, putting it in by Kano, the goalkeeper who came in about three or four minutes ago. If you watch this play, tell me who you think was winning the game. Look at that. Huh. Extra effort on the part of Winston Hackett and Emilio Romero. Magnificent play by Winston Hackett and Emilio Romero. Steamers on top, four to one. Time running down. Two minutes. Oh! Romero with a left foot. Steamers have played brilliantly. I tell you, the only way to play with the Steamers this year is to get on top early, because if you're not on top early, forget about it. This is some kind of second-half team. Hackett. Hackett. Shot! Oh, just wide! Steamers really taking control of the game. Time running down. Hustle back for the ball. A minute, 15 seconds left to be played. The Steamers on top by a score of 4-1, to one, and we have a timeout on the floor. Each team's allowed one timeout per team per half. And the Steamers on top, 4-1. to one. As we have told you, the Steamers are at home again on Monday night against the San Francisco Fog. But let me tell you what this win means for the Steamers. They're in the Central Division. That Central Division has turned out to be the toughest division. Cleveland, with a loss tonight, would go three and a half games down to St. Louis. The Steamers would become 12 and two on the year. Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, if the Steamers win tonight, they would match the total output of wins of their entire year last year. The momentum has switched to the field. You see Cleveland. They would go nine and six, Chicago and Buffalo. And they'd really open up some space for themselves. And Cleveland losing tonight for the first time. If the score stays the same, it is four to one right now with a minute and 15 left to be played in regulation time. Cleveland winning their last four in a row. And if they do lose this game, Cleveland with a record of nine and six. So the steamers increasing their margin over the Cleveland force to three and a half games. Pat McBride, who's living a little easier life this year, so I tell you, it's a great thing to be a coach of a 12 and 2 team rather than a 20 and uh, or 12 and 20 team. You got to say that Pat McBride has stuck with the American players. He has developed an American team. He has a lot of St. Louis players, and he's hung with it. Last year, you would think a guy would go through and 
revamp his whole team. And Kano has left the goal. Kano has left the goal for Cleveland. And that's O'Hara playing the goalkeeper's position for the Cleveland Force. No goalie for the Force right now. The goalie has to wear a uniform different from the other players. And there you see the green of John O'Hara, who's a defender. Time running down, under a minute. Steamers on top, 4-1, whistle. And the push on Steve Petcher. Look at Petcher. He was watching the ball roll to the other end of the field. You know, one noticeable thing about the Steamers is the way they play at home. They really take control of games. And play both ends of the floor. Out hustle every opponent that comes into the checker dome playing both ends of the floor and it's paying off once again tonight beating the force by a score of four to one so it looks like the steamers are going to equal their total win output of a year ago oh hard shot and elievsky still hanging in there steamers will remain on top great play by elievsky but the rebound went right out to graham fife Ilyevsky on the ground allows his second goal of the game. And Graham Fife coming up with its 10th goal of the year. Fife with 10 goals, 7 assists, good for 17 points. Watch it again, watch the rebound. Slobo will make the initial save on Yentis. And on the spot on the left wing, Graham Fife. And if you watch Ty Keo right here, number 10, you see he looked for his man, his man had gotten in behind him. See him keep turning his head. There's the guy he was looking for. Oh, do you believe it? Wait a minute. Sit down, sports fans. It's not over yet. 28 Graham seconds Fife. left. Graham Fife just stuck the second goal in in three seconds. Is that a record? Seven seconds is a record in the MISL for two goals back to back. But I tell you, if this isn't, it's very close to it. Watch this. Boom. Slobo coming out. There by himself, Ilyevsky. 28 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, a game that everybody thought was tucked away. The steamers on top, four to one. People. Boom, five hit it for two. Boom, five hit it for three. We have a game. A very close game. A possibility of overtime at four to three. And all of a sudden, the people that were heading for the exits are now coming back to their seats. 28 seconds left in regulation time. And when we talked about a lead never being safe in the Major Indoor Soccer League, this is a good example of showing that we were never kidding about that. A lot has been said about the fact that this game is goals. A lot of goals, a lot of activity. Nothing can say it better than the score. Four to three. It was four to one. Graham Fife on their replay that we showed you. Boom, stuck one home in a hurry. Then on the ensuing kickoff, turned around, stuck it by Ilyevsky. It's 4-3, 28 seconds remaining, fourth quarter. Keo sends it deep. O'Hara makes his first save of the game. As 20 the seconds defender. left. Time running down. Seven seconds apart, Freddy Gregoro held the record for the fastest two goals. You look at the clock. Cleveland still pressuring. O'Hara, O'Hara, shot wide. Madison, shot out. He put it up over the top of the plexiglass. Holy mackerel. Ian Anderson with the rebound, putting it right over the goal, and there's four seconds left in regulation. There you saw it. Anderson had the shot, came to his left foot. He's a right-footed kicker. Four seconds. Slovo should be able to kill this off by putting the ball high and long. One time. Tested right to the final second. Slovo Ilyevsky makes the save. Steamers defeat the Cleveland Force four to three. We'll be back with a wrap up of tonight's game right after this.
to everyone who works so we can play. This Bud's for you. This Bud's for you. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do. Quite the way you do. So here's to you. You know it isn't only what you say, it's what you do. This Bud's for you. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. It was one to nothing at halftime. It was four to one with just a few moments remaining in the game. Then the Cleveland Force came back and scored two quick goals, pressured right to the end, but the St. Louis Steamers hung on. They defeat the Cleveland Force four to three. Steamers go now 12 and two. They match their entire victory output of last season with 12 victories so far this year and remain atop the Central Division. Joel, any final comments? Action-packed game, a very positional, deliberate style of uh, soccer. Shots on goal, 63 for the Cleveland Force, and the St. Louis Steamers with 54. I've enjoyed myself, Terry, and look forward to the Steamers' next home game, Monday night, the San Francisco Fog, here at the Checker Dome. So be on hand when the Fog rolls into the Checker Dome on Monday night with the Steamers' next game. Steamers remain on top of the Central Division, 12-2. Tonight's game was directed by Mark Payton. Produced by Tim Lawicki and Bill Unwin. This has been a Sports View production. Final score, St. Louis Steamers 4, the Cleveland Force 3. Cable Classic Mutiny on the Bounty Sunday. Get ready to match the stars, Alan Oppenheimer. The comets are coming. Get ready for hot winter nights. You know, people around this city say that during the winter, in this building, the night is hot. Some even say it's the night. combination of uh, their hard work and talent put together with some tactical things we tried to accomplish during the games. Uh, I think that carried us through uh, and forward to a successful season. Look at this! Look at this! Mikowski, far side to Jaramina, goal! Damir Jaramina! Ball played into the midfield, headed down. Bain with it with four seconds remaining. Two seconds, one, a goal! He scored! He scored! A goal! As time runs out! This is there, tries to center it out in front, can't. Here's a shot, and a goal! Jan Gusen, and he rips off the jersey! Gusen rips off the jersey! Dragging it to the near side! Thomas have really had the heat on Kia, tries the game! Oh, Mitchell to Kia down low, we've got a tie game. What an outstanding play, you talk about what?
thought it was a joke, and so you laughed. Oh, no! You laughed, you laughed, and laughed, and then you left, but now you know I'm utterly mad. Take a look at that page boy haircut. And that's what gives me such great faith. For not going to come easy. We know as we get in this last third of the season, things get tighter and tougher, and every game seems to be, you know, it's a great swing of whether you win or whether you lose, but we got to keep our cool and keep on playing. There's a shot and a goal by Goosen. He's got the hat trick. 22, Doug McLaughlin. Out front, Valentine with their payback. With the last hero, Ian Frazier scoring that winning goal. Oh, you're asking for it there. It's Borland who comes in late with the elbow.
between the legs of Reynolds. Ballantyne across midfield, dumped from behind by Joey Barger, and the foul is called. Ballantyne moves straight down the middle. Moves wide on Manning. He's Kansas down. City goal! Oh! Out front, Ballantyne drives with their payback. ahead to Kim Rutfett. Rutfett looking for Valentine who's open. His shot wide. He scores. It hit off the post. Comets win. Five for the final. Kansas City wins it on a long drive by Kim Rutfett. He was looking for Valentine. It looked like it was going to bend wide but it deflected in off the post and the Comets have snapped San Diego's 14 game home winning streak along with Frankie. St. Louis would dearly love a quick score. Frankie tries to make his move around Frazier, who batted it away. Keeps control to Frankie along the far side. Shoots wide, follow-up. No. In front, trying to find uh, Feltham flashing through the box. Knocked away once again by the Comets. Into the crowd will get another Baltimore kick in. jumped over that ball, got an assist. There's a shot and a goal by Goosens. He's got the hat trick. And it's about time, Donna. We yeah. Something went our way exactly what's happened to Jimmy a couple of times mm -hmm. tonight. The shot was wide. You feel, you feel bad as a goalkeeper, but you've had to cover that initial shot. As you know, last year was a common first in Kansas City. It was a kind of season that made you want to laugh and cry. Our record was terrible. But you the on the sidekick shuffle in Dallas. It's the fans game in Cleveland where the force averaged a league high 12,800 per outing and packed in a record 21,000 for a single game. High flying Craig Allen responded to the fan affair with an 81 point season, including a hard earned membership in the exclusive 50 goal club. Fans 
played host to the Baltimore Blast in the opening round of the playoffs. And the series went the five-game limit before the forces Mike Sweeney did a little Fred Astaire into the finals, intent on keeping a bear hug on the missile crown. San Diego was the spot for game one of the finals as the Strikers and Soccer State claim to the championship. With the series set to begin, it became clear that if one player was on the hot seat, it was Minnesota's workhorse Tino Letteri, who had to defend against the most potent offense in missile history. In the opener, the Soccers got to Letteri early and often for a 7-2 win. Game two had a similar scenario as the first, with the Soccers testing Tino early, but this time the Birdman was ready closing the door while his striker cohorts bombarded Zoltan Toth in a 6-1 thumping that handed the Sockers their first ever home loss in the playoffs. Fans in the Twin Cities sent something special and standing room only became the way to go at the Met Center. In game three, Alan Willie continued his hot play, putting on a clinic with four first half tallies in a 7-2 strikers victory. Terry offered salt for the wound early on in game four, but the Sockers countered with a 3-0 first half lead. Never mind, said striker conductor David Byrne, who requested and received help from the home folk, as the strikers mounted one of the great comebacks in MISL playoff history. With the game deadlocked at three in the final minute, hometown hero Greg Thompson sent the strikers up three games to one. Down 3-1, to one, the defending champion Sockers were battle-worn but prepared to play, aware that a miracle was within reach if they stuck to their game. On the other side, the visitors were loose, eager, and just a victory away from a major professional championship. All I need is a Minnesota fans weren't phased by Game 5, but rather cherished the opportunity to cheer on their strikers one more time as they sought the ultimate goal. The home team got on the board first when Willie converted again on the power play. But Sultan Toth kept the soccers close, and Brian Quinn urged on the soccers in miracle worker fashion. All I need is a came down to 60 minutes of MISL action to complete the league's most successful season. Nearly 13,000 were on hand, rooting on a miracle. And again, Johnny on the spot was the mighty Quinn, giving the Sockers an early lead. Later, like Kevin Crow in Game 6, Fernando Clavillo saved the day in the crease. And when the pass found the feet of series MVP Brian Quinn, the miracle came true for the Sockers. CBP Productions would also like to thank Lee Tyrell, Mike Del Judas, and Tim O'Fallon. I'm Kurt Chapman. Brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Ricky, right side, Bellinger, 
Ebert in front, Davis. Yeah. Davis in front, and here's Redmond. Oh, goal! Since 1979, the screaming and shouting has never stopped. That was the year these fans were first introduced to something called indoor soccer. As you can tell, it was love at first sight. The St. Louis Steamers are always on the go. Hustle and enthusiasm is this team's trademark. The Steamers have played for the MISL championship three times, and they have played before more fans than any other team in the major indoor soccer league. More than a million and a half people have come to the arena to cheer and celebrate with the Steamers. Fans who know that indoor soccer is more than just thrills and action and goals. Fans who know that indoor soccer is more than just supporting cast there is hardly a night that goes by that the stars of this show don't give 100%. On defense, the Steamers are led by the best goalkeeper the game of indoor soccer has ever known. The man against whom all others shall forever be measured. His name is Slobodan Ilyevsky, but Steamer fans call him Slobo. Look at this, Culey centers at Chapman. Oh, what a save by Slobo. Unbelievable. A shot. Slobo the save. Rebound. Carl Rose knocked it away. They center it. Shot. Slobo again! Slobo is the centerpiece of a defense that is the best in the major indoor soccer league, but he has plenty of help. Much of it comes from two native St. Louisans, defenders Tony Bellinger and Sam Bick, guys who are known for marking their opponents right out of the game, guys who are synonymous with the word all-star. For instance, Bellinger has been voted to the all-star team five consecutive years. You can't win in the Major Indoor Soccer League unless you can score goals. And in Tony Glavin, the Steamers have one of the best gunners around. The Motorman, he's called. A threat to score from anywhere on the field. Uh-oh, Kelly loses it to Davis. Right up front, that's it. Taken away by Glavin, he scores! Big crowd on hand in St. Louis tonight. They've been rather quiet. They won't be now as Tony Glavin lands in his Tony Glavin is the Steamers' all-time leading scorer but he's certainly not the team's only offensive threat. When you also have guys like Don Ebert, Ricky Davis, and Diego Peso on your side, opposing teams ask the question, how do you stop the steamers? Well, not too many people have. On top, playing a shot, Ebert oh. scores! Catch a Torrey, a little bit wide, pace the goal! Davis comes in, it's it! To Anderson, a shot, and a rebound, a goal! He's going to score. He took it away. It's a goal. Oh. Holy cow. Catch it, Torrey. You okay there? You okay? You shouldn't ask, should I? The man who calls the shots for the steamers is Coach Dave Clements. And if you think there's a lot of action on the field, imagine what it must be like for Coach Clements behind the bench. Just don't get too tight. You're a little anxious. You're getting a little tight and getting, you know, getting a yard. Okay? If I'm seeing things that are relevant to the game, I'm going to let them know. Uh, physically, it's very difficult once the player's on the field to communicate with them. I mean, there's so much noise. you got to get the old hands up and you got to scream. Go, Tony, go! Push up, tighten up, Timmy! Push up! Pressure! He's always shouting from the bench. You know, again, like I said, any time I get the ball, there's some times where you're not too sure what to do and... You know, you hear a call, and it's from him. He's telling me, go on, take him on, take him on. Come on, Tony, come on, Tony. Go, go. You're on your own. What this all adds up to is a combination that simply cannot be topped. And if you don't think so, just ask anyone who's ever been to a steamer game. Well, it's exciting and in action, and it's never dull. Never dull. I like the enthusiasm of the crowd and just to make them go and score. The excitement, fast moving. It's not hockey. The price are real cheap. Good family entertainment. They're not as boring as football. Oh. football. And, you know, 
in, in soccer, you can have short people. You don't have to have these big, big fatsos like in football. I mean, let's go run down each other. I love it. It's the best thing around. Do you scream a lot? A lot. How about a favorite player? Do you have one? Glavin. Jeff. Kichitori. Ebert and everybody. Slobo. Slobo and Pacquiao Slobo. and a lot of them. Going on towards the end of the game, when they're standing up cheering for you, you, you can't do nothing but give 150% for them. Come on! Come on! These fans here in St. Louis? St. Louis? Oh, there's no, there's no question. These are the best in the whole of the country, and it's a big country. Maybe the best thing about going to a steamer game is the victory celebration. While the players celebrate on the field, the fans do the same in the stands. Indoor soccer, St. Louis steamer style. More than just a game, a happening, an event. Like what you see has been produced by Anheuser-Busch Sports Productions. November 13th was a landmark for the team. Now very much alive and kicking, players could concentrate on playing and winning. And that first game was a dream come true because like myself and, and a lot of other players on our team, we weren't ready to pack it in in this area because we thought we had done a tremendous job here and we wanted to continue to work here. Tattoo against Bernie James. Tries to turn it, front goal! A month into the season, the kicks record stood at six and six. It was to be a roller coaster season. The first ride to the top began with a big win over Minnesota December 26th. The sidekicks would not lose until mid-January in Cleveland. It was the longest winning streak in sidekicks history. By the first week in February, legitimate talk of playoff surface. Anytime you've got a guy that scores 70 something goals for you, and every time you've got a top goalkeeper in your league, and add that on with 20 players as one, you, you, you're going to be in every game. Chris Sobieski was setting a team record for most wins by a goalie. The sidekicks had already won 15 with Sobieski tending goal with half the season yet to play. Sobieski went through the ringer, playing often with little rest. A preseason injury to Billy Phillips dictated Sobieski turn into an Iron Man. My teammates uh, believed in me, trusted me, and was you know, the, the biggest uh, like boost uh, for me and for my effort. I, I tried to play very well every game because I didn't want to disappoint them. It was a great feeling to, to feel that the guys uh, stand behind me. We're underway once again. Orland goes to the corner and taps it right back to goalkeeper Chris Sobieski. 1-1 score, 6.35 to play here in the second quarter. Here's Powers flipping it back to the corner for Tattoo. He scores from a bad angle. Off comes the shirt, and Dallas takes a lead of 2-1 to one in this game.
Tattoo continued to tear up the league with his scoring, and Mark Carpenter returned to form for a valid one-two punch. Working on low to Vegas, gets free, he's right in, it's all alone in front, Carpenter just scores, and the game is over. Tattoo made it happen. Tattoo just seems to be getting better. The more experience that he's been getting, the, the better player he's been coming, and I don't think we've, uh, we've seen the best of Tattoo yet. Coaster started down at the All-Star break. The Florio goal! Sobieski came off his line by the time Gino had the ball. Chris could just watch him score, and the force take the lead. Long pass. Whitman the header. Wide. Rebound. Savage, and he missed it. Rebound again. A score on Baltimore's Billy Ronson. Will win it. Four to three. During one stretch, the sidekicks played eight games against playoff teams. They went three and five, but also lost Pedro DeBrito and Mike Uremovich to injuries. Suddenly the walls were breached and a promising season was in jeopardy. Enter Willie Milano. Gee, plays it ahead. Here's Milano with a chance on the left side. Shoot score. Coming here to play for Dallas is, is just really helps me. I like coming to a building where there is 10, 12,000 people to every game. It really helps me. It makes me really happy to come out there and show the team that I can produce and show the fans that I, I'm going to help them to make the playoffs and hopefully the championship. Wes McLeod's adaptability and move to the defense also pleasantly surprised sidekicks fans. Formula for our success last year was there wasn't too many really highs and too many really lows. I think we were on a pretty well even keel the whole, whole season. We were competitive every game, and every player on our team basically has the same attitude. And when you have 20 guys that get playing like that, you're, you're a hard team to beat. The sidekicks couldn't find themselves. Were they the team that beat the five-time indoor champion San Diego Sockers on March 22nd, or the team that two days later traveled to Bloomington, Minnesota, where the goals came from everywhere? Alan Willie, Hudson, back to Willie. Kinsey, come and steals it away. Steve Kinsey, score! Got Marinero on his right, he'll take the shot. Lona Vegas fires it. It's 7-0, Minnesota. Wow. The final tally showed strikers eight, sidekicks nothing. The worst defeat in Dallas history. If one shot can turn a season, it happened just a week later. This is the matchup of the night right here. Tattoo turns, skitters wide. Might have grazed the post. P.J. had the angle covered. Taken away by Victor Moreland. Bollmeyer gets a foot in. Moreland still in possession. 100 seconds in the overtime. For Tattoo, it's the turn. Husky gets put in. Milano deflected wide. Skitters off the board. Bicycle in! And the game is over! What a goal by Tattoo! Oh, my Lord, what a goal to win the game by Tattoo. Four to three, Dallas wins it at the 13-26 mark of the overtime. That is an absolutely fabulous goal by Tattoo. You know, it was a very important game for us. You know, because we have to prove, you know, we have we are a good team and we had a chance to beat Cleveland. And scoring that goal in overtime and the way end, you know, with, uh, you know, just a, a great goal. What can you say? You know, it's just happened. You know, it's, it's nothing was planned. You know, it really shot the ball, hit the wall, coming out. I couldn't do anything else. The only thing I could do was bike. And I did, and the ball went right in the net. And, you know, I think that moment, you know, we showed to Cleveland, you know, we're a good team. It supplied the strength to clinch the playoffs by April 15th. But when Dallas lost five of their last six games, it was evident the adrenaline rush was over. We had qualified for the playoffs. We knew that. 
But we had a marvellous opportunity to go one or two in the league, and we kind of let it slip. Um, uh, the performance, first half in the last game of the season against LA, was a disaster. And I suppose that was a low point of coming even in the last game because I rather felt it was going to hurt us if we didn't get it right in the most important period, the playoffs. And I know I was furious. And uh, at half time, which is not normally me, uh, I made it very much aware, the players very much aware of how I felt because I felt it wasn't us. I felt we were going through the motions. And that's not the Dallas Psychics. Dallas Psychics have always been, even from day one, a real good, hard-working, scrappy team uh, that never gives in, uh, never says die, uh, and battles, no matter what happens, win or lose. Still much was accomplished in the regular season. Tattoo's talent shattered records right and left, 73 goals, 38 assists, 10 game-winning goals, 9 hat tricks, 111 points, earning him the league scoring title and MVP trophy. I think each player has uh, different moments that was very exciting uh, for us and made everything uh, so much more fun to watch. Gets his sixth goal of the year. Uh, there were so many high points. I think it was just getting into the playoffs and uh, was a tremendous uh, accomplishment for the amount of time we had to prepare for the season. Here's Pesha in front for Dowdy. Turns it around, lunging for the shot at the buzzer. It's all over. The sidekicks in four years finally beat the San Diego Sockers. I think that kind of added and set the tone. I think that we all suddenly thought, hey, we're achieving this, we're achieving this, and one after the other, so we obtained these firsts, uh, to eventually there were no more firsts. We had beaten every team in the MISL, and we had won in every arena in the MISL. When you put that uniform on, you know that you're going to go out and you're going to give everything, and as long as every everybody works together, you're going to be successful, and that's what we were throughout the season. Hits it on the volley, a header, score, two, it's tied and one. Our goal this past season were doing a little better than what we did the year before. Okay, last year we we lost to Minnesota in the first round, so this year we really want to go a little farther. We want to go. Past the first round, if we lose in the final, in our division, it's no big deal. But at least we did something better than the year before. It was one of our worst games ever, and yet they only beat us by one goal. They didn't do anything to give us problems, and uh, we knew that if we had uh, just started to play our style a bit better, that uh, we would have no problems beating them. I thought it was a uh, more individual than uh, a team battle. I thought it was we worked very hard, and uh, the moment I got out the the series, I was tired, and I guarantee he was tired. It wasn't just Savage marking him single-handedly; they were double teaming him quite a bit, and uh, that's when the second and third forward came into play, and they needed to get up and support him and get open.
three players then scored for Dallas with Victor Moreland putting in the winner and surprisingly the series was tied and the sidekicks headed home. Come back 2-0 at that time in a five game series uh, could have been uh, you know, curtains for us. So the second game was a good performance, good victory, did what uh, was needed, we came back with a split. Game three was a defensive showdown. Dallas took the early lead on a Mark Carpen power play, but Baltimore answered with two before the half. Milano put in the equalizer in the third quarter and it remained tied through regulation. Just into overtime, Andy Chapman scored the winner and suddenly Dallas was one game away from elimination. To lose at home um, and to give them a 2-1 advantage with only one more victory needed out of the two remaining games um, was, was really, it swung, the momentum had swung into their uh, court. Two nights later, the sidekicks took a two to one lead at the half. Tattoo finally shook free from Savage and scored to give the sidekicks the lead, but the blast came back. Richard Chinapu scored twice within 90 seconds, one more overtime. Again, we have everything against us. You know, and uh, and the moment we went to overtime, and said, "Well, our season can be over now." Milano into tattoo against Savage, playing along the board. Tattoo spin shot, scores, starts to win. The moment I put in the net, I was I was very happy because it, we, I give another chance to the team to to play another game. Pack the bags, we're going to Baltimore. Dallas would have to do it on the road and the hard way. Savage was giving Tattoo fits in game five, but in the fourth quarter, the kicks exploded. Goal, Dallas! Just like that, Dallas comes back and shows us that they've got what a championship team is made of. Throughout the season, we always come back from the dead, went out once more, and that's what we did. And to say throughout the playoffs, we played as a unit, we were all together, and that's what really takes to be a winner. And here we go, as Smith will trigger it. Just outside of box, chips it, shot, block, comes out, shot off the boards, look out, shot goal, Yaramovich. Dallas again showing that they are not going to wilt under any pressure. I thought after the fourth game, uh, when we won that game in overtime and, and leveled the series, I just had that feeling, that belief that we were going to win. Lawson again, settles, looks, drops, shot, and, and a goal for Dallas, and that could be the one that ends the season for Baltimore. That looks like it might actually. I think the manner in which we won it was tremendous because it wasn't like we won five to four and held on for the last five minutes. We won it going away, you know, we went ahead five to four, then six to four, and then seven to four. 20 seconds left, Dallas content to chip it away. In front, off the post, follow-up goal, and that's the exclamation point on the ball game for Dallas. In the fourth quarter, five goals, a hat trick for Mark Carpen, and suddenly the sidekicks had escaped, winning three games to two. And just as suddenly, Dallas was in Cleveland for the divisional finals. Before the fifth game in Baltimore, I'd made a decision uh, that when we'd won it, uh, I certainly would bring in reserve team players for that first game in Cleveland, no matter what. Wes McLeod, David Stride, and Chris Sobieski were all held out of action at the start of game one. And Tattoo joined them after an encounter with Cleveland's John Stolmeyer. As a man, out for Kitson, he scores! Paul Kitson! And he beat the goaltender Phillips on the short side. Cleveland won 5-3, but game two would feature a well-rested and mentally prepared sidekicks club. We weren't really ready for that series to start that quickly. And, uh, you know, Tattoo did get injured in game one. And, uh, you know, we were very concerned about that. And for the doctors and our trainer to have him playing in game two was phenomenal. And we didn't expect him to be there. So we showed up knowing we were going to have to play our best game of the season as a team. And then... To hear that Tattoo was going to play that game really fired us up. It was evident from the beginning, Willie Milano and Tattoo each scored twice. It 
It was four to zip, sidekicks at the half. Dallas held on for a nine to six win, but more important, they returned home for the first time in a week. sense this air of confidence, quiet confidence starting to appear, it was a good feeling. And when you go back to your airport uh, and you see your fans there, they, they, they're sensing, they're sensing, hey, this could be the start of something very good. Two to one, Dallas on top. Game three was a close one at the beginning. Dallas with a two to one lead in the third quarter, but another two goal effort from Tattoo led the way as the kicks won five to two. Puts it for Tattoo, it's in! What a goal by Tattoo! And what an assist by McLeod who took it the length of the floor. We knew that we had caught a town's attention, so to speak, and uh, you know, it gave us more incentive to go out there and do a good job. Not that there was no incentive at all. There certainly was, but it really uh, added to it. This group of players was now getting attention. There was talk of a sellout at reunion, and it was not a rumor. That's the answer for everything we've done. You know, it was a hard work, and have 16,000 and 800 people there was a payoff. The desire to play is just heightened so much. You don't fatigue as easy. You feel the sense of purpose, because now you have a community that is coming out to watch you perform. And we felt that we had to give them their money for it. Lawson with a mortar deflected in. 